Hello and welcome back to another Max MSP tutorial. My name is Andrew Robinson and in this video we are going to look at alpha masking. This is a technique I actually did a tutorial series on recently. If you follow Cycling74 on their Instagram page, I uh, took it over for a week and I made these tutorial videos talking about this technique and they're each minute long um, and you can watch them there. But in those videos, because, you know, it's Instagram, everything's got to be only a minute, there is a little bit of information I left out that I want to talk about here right now with you guys uh, in a much uh, more appropriate amount of time. So let's just jump right into it. First things first, if you did not watch that video series, you may be asking yourself right now, what is alpha masking? Well, alpha masking is where you take uh, a alpha channel mask video, basically an, a video on the alpha channel, and you do a little bit of alpha blending with another video. And if the, the alpha channel values are different, it's gonna blend together on that alpha plane, uh, which is gonna give you a really cool, like kind of crossfade, mix transparency look to your image. And you can do really cool stuff with this. And one of the things we can do with this is create a real time alpha mask, like around the silhouette of a body. And that's, uh, really valuable for a lot of different things and you could go a lot of different directions with this so let's just jump right into it first we're going to start with the jit dot world and i'm going to say at floating one at fsa a one and at fs menu bar zero and if you've seen any of my old jitter videos you know uh that i like to start with these for my jit dot world so that our window is floating we have full screen anti-aliasing on and when we go full, full screen that menu bar is turned off so we just get the image um, and if you are very new to watching my videos and you've just started uh, with the other Jitter intro series, you may be asking yourself, what is Jit.World? Well, it's very similar to Jit.Window in that it gives us a video window, but it uses the OpenGL 3D rendering context. So it's a little bit different from just regular Jitter stuff. But the reason it's really cool to use Jit.World instead of Jit.Window is because it operates on the GPU instead of the CPU, meaning we're going to get a little bit better frame rate um, in our video. So it's super valuable to use Jit.World rather than jit.window. But there is a catch to this that you gotta be aware of that can maybe be kind of tricky, especially if you're just getting used to Jitter, but it's just, you know, we're gonna roll with it. This is what you have to do. You gotta first create a toggle, patch that toggle into the jit.world, lock your patch, click that toggle, and send that one out into the jit.world, which tells this to start rendering. So now the render engine is on and you noticed it went from black to this like light gray. That's kind of the default setting to let us know that our window is now on and rendering. And what's super nice about this is we can just set that and kind of forget it. We don't need to do anything else with this jit.world now. Instead, we're going to create this object called jit.gl.video plane and we're going to say at transform reset two. So the edge of the video plane, which is now created inside our world, our 3D world, is stretching to the edge of the window. So we can think of this like we're still operating in 2D right now because we're not gonna do any 3D stuff today. Um, but we have created this JIT GL video plane which is being drawn to the JIT.world context. And what's cool about this GL, open GL context stuff that I'm talking about is we don't have to patch the video plane object into the JIT.world. Um, the video plane object is going to be the last object in our chain. It is automatically drawing whatever goes into the video plane into the world. So that's kind of could be confusing if you're new because like I, you might be saying to yourself, I thought we had to patch everything in together, but that's not quite the case with GL. Um, we don't have to patch anything in to the world, only to the GL video plane. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, I said we're going to create a real-time mask for um, our body or whatever. And to do that, we're going to use the object called jit.grab, which uh, is how you get webcam, a webcam stream into Max. If you just patch that jit.grab right into that jit.gl video plane and we send it the open message and lock our patch and click that, uh, you'll notice I am now in the webcam um, in the window. And that is because that is what jit.grab does. It grabbed the webcam and it is now streaming that data in real time into the video plane because it is patched into our video plane. So cool, we got ourselves in there. Um, and you may be wondering one other quick thing real quick. If you saw my other Jitter video, you may be asking yourself, I thought 
uh, j stuff had to have a, gr a bang sent to it to output its frame. That's what you said, Andrew. Um, and that is also true. Um, but not with OpenGL. <laughs> If you have a jit.grab, jit.movie, or whatever patched into a jit.gl video plane, it's going to automatically know to output its frame. It's just the way it's built, and it makes things a little bit easier. Um, so we don't actually have to send a bang to the jit.grab to output the frame. It's automatically going to do that because we're working in this GL context right now. So that's really cool. Um, now here comes the real fun alpha masking part. Um, we have to first create an alpha mask to... To blend our videos together and first off we only have one video so let's bring in another video I'm gonna say jit.movie and I'm gonna say at vol zero so there's no volume and we're gonna send the read message to jit.movie I'm gonna open up movie I'm just literally gonna grab a random movie file this is the first one if we patch the jit.movie in the GL video plane you see there's the movie um, so we want to do an alpha blend which there's a jitter object for this called jit.alpha blend if we patch the camera into the left inlet and the movie into the right inlet, you would expect them to blend, but nothing's happening. And that is uh, where the alpha mask is gonna come in handy. What's going on, the reason why this isn't working right now is because both of these objects, alpha values in their alpha planes are set to uh, 255 for everything. Um, in our previous videos, we talked about how everything in Jitter is a matrix made and by default generally made up of four planes, your alpha RGB uh, plane. The alpha is the first one, and if I create a cell block, we can see the values for that first plane. You can see it says 250, 50, 50, 50 everywhere. And if we take the movie, patch in another one, it also says 250. Um, so because all our alpha values are the same, which is by default what you're gonna get with like a webcam or a movie, unless it already has an alpha plane value in it, it's just gonna default to 255 for everything. Um, so we can't, we need, we need these to not be the same because it's the difference between these alpha values that you really truly get it blended. Um, so to do that, we have to change the alpha values of our, uh, our webcam so that we can do this proper um, alpha blending technique. So we're gonna get rid of the jit.cell blocks and we're going to use the jit.unpack object that we learned about in a previous video. And we're going to patch that into the jit.grab and you notice it turned white and that's because it is right now unpacking the alpha plane and passing that through and as we just saw that was all 255 so that's why everything is white um what we need to do is we need to take the jit.pack object and we need to pack everything back together just like this and it's going to be red because we just packed the red plane, we're going to pack the green through, which is going to turn it a little yellow, and then the blue, and now we have normal color again. Um, so the reason we have to pack, unpack and pack this back together is because we're going to actually change this one. I'm going to delete that patch cord, which is going to uh, make this not work anymore, and we're going to instead use this jit.rgb to luma object which if i pass the webcam into that and we patch that into our video plane real quick we'll see it gives us a black and white version of the video that's what this does it takes an rgb jitter matrix that is like three or more planes and it brings it down to a one plane black and white matrix so anytime you need to make any video black and white jit.rgb to luma is the object to use and we are going to use this um, as our alpha channel value because it's exactly what we want. Um, black, it's black and white because it's one plane, which is very helpful. Uh, we only want one plane to go into this jit.pack. And it's between zero and 255. White is 255, zero is black. So we're going to, it's going to work because those are the same values that we're dealing with. It's perfect. Um, but we're gonna make this a lot cleaner uh, than just this black and white. We are going to throw in a jit.greater than object, um, which is what we learned about in our Boolean videos, just regular greater than objects and max, but there is a jit version as well. And in it, we can define a value for something and we're gonna say like uh, 0.3. So any pixel value that is greater than 0.3 is going to become a one because it's true and a zero if it's false, which once we patch that after our RGB Luma is gonna give us this crazy thresholded image, um, which is exactly what we want because now we could patch this in to be our alpha plane and we could patch this in back. Uh, we could patch the alpha blend back. And now that we have replaced the alpha plane um, with 
values that are between 0 and 255, we have the alpha blend effect working. And it's uh, we're going to bring in the shit.p window. If I patch the greater than into the p window, you'll see everywhere where it's black is where the other video is blending in, and everywhere where it's white is uh, not blending. And before it was just all white, which is why we weren't seeing any blending. But now it's not, so we are starting to see the blend work. It's really cool. Um, and there's a lot more we can do to this to clean it up. One of those techniques that I talked about is um, using the prepend object, which is the same thing as using like a message object and defining this message with a variable. You could either say val dollar sign one or we could say prepend val. These are essentially the same thing. If we patch the prepend val into the greater than equal to or greater than object for jitter and we patch a float number box into it, we can change this value to change um, what our greater than value is to change how much of the blend is coming through. And again, we could use this message with the dollar sign one as well. Both of these are the exact same thing. Um, but I like using prepend because it's a, an object and it's stable. Sometimes you can accidentally replace messages um, and that's not fun. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go with the prepend val object and we're gonna adjust that, have some fun there. Another really cool technique that I talked about in the Instagram series that I wanna share um, which uh, is pretty cool is um, our down sample blur and it's very easy to do this where we're going to use a jit matrix and we're going to say one char because we're just dealing on the alpha plane and we're going to down sample this um, first by half so 640 our, our uh, webcam my webcam is 1280 by 720 so I'm doing half of that which is 640 by 360 um, and then I'm actually going to do half again, so uh, that's 32, and this would be 18, um, and that is one-fourth the dimension size. We're going to patch that right in there, and you notice it got super pixelated. That's exactly what we wanted, because we're now going to use the jit.fastblur um, to blur those pixels out. And we use the range message to do that. And there's also a mode message, which is going to change the way the blending style works. I'm setting it to four for squares because I think that looks the best. We're going to patch that right after our jit.matrix. And you'll notice that when I do that, it's all blurry now. Perfect. We're going to copy this matrix and we're going to upscale this back to our original size. And we're going to patch that in after the jit.fastblur. And you notice now we have a little bit cleaner edges around everything for our alpha blending effect. And you may ask yourself, what exactly, why did I do that? And why does it work that way? And the answer is um, when we downsample the matrix, we're getting rid of a lot of excess pixels uh, that we don't need. We're losing information. Then we're blurring out what is there um, on that smaller matrix. And then we're taking that small version and we're stretching it up. And by doing that, we are not getting those pixels we caused out in the beginning back. Those have been blurred out and smoothed over and forgotten. Um, which, because there's like less information that just, but like it's all blurred and smooth, that gives us these clean edges. Um, you can see the difference uh, if we just pass this video into the another jit.p window. Um, this was, you know, the original, and this is what we are now showing for our alpha matrix. It's a blurred a little bit. It's not as sharp, but that gives us these, like, cleaner edges um, with less noise. So it looks a little bit better, and it's super helpful for that reason. And that's it. That's the alpha mask technique. Um, there's so much you could do with this. Um, you know, we don't have to use a webcam. We could use another movie file. We could change these movie files. Yeah, that's cool. There's all kinds of things we could do with this, um, and it's all fun. And that's alpha masking. Um, like I said, it was a little bit more advanced in terms of where we've been uh, with Jitter, but these are all pretty common objects that we've talked about in videos before, even if we haven't seen the Jitter form of them. And then like the other objects that were new that we talked about, like jit.rgb to luma, very simple. It just takes a matrix, any Jitter plane, and it makes it black and white.
Um, alpha blend lets you do the blending that we are seeing on the alpha channel, but it won't work if they're if the alpha values are the same. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, but that's it. That's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job, and I really appreciate that. Um, and of course, as always. Um, if anybody has any questions, leave those down in the comments below and I will be happy to answer them when I can. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next video.